Good morning, everyone. It is so nice to have you with me again today. We are continuing to work in our Snowflake journal. And on this page for today, I want to create on sheet music. This is Bev from Art by Bedell, and let's get started. So for this sheet music page, I want to add a couple pockets here on the bottom. Now the page was too wide for my journal, so I just folded this edge in until I got the width that I needed for my journal page. My journals are bigger journals. For my journal would look something like this. And this is, oh, let's do just the page. It is 10 and three quarters by seven. That is the big, biggest size. Now I make pages sometimes that are smaller than this to put in with this journal, but I cannot go any bigger. I have some of this lace that if you remember on our last video, I had cut apart a pillow sham that I had bought from our Goodwill store. And I want to make a pocket on both sides of this page. So I'm going to do it on the front of the page and then again on the back of the page. And I'm gonna do it all in one long strip like this. So I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to attach this. That will be our first part on the journal to do and then I will be back. All right, I have my lace sewn on. Now, as you can see, it buckles a little. If you don't pull this taunt, then you're just gonna have a saggy um, pocket that's not gonna hold anything. So I've pulled it taunt and in time that will flatten out. So that's our pocket and I love the lace with the, with the sheet music. I just think it looks so nice, so elegant. Now we want to build our tag for this. We have two tags we're building, one for each pocket. And I'm just gonna set this sheet music page aside while we work on our tags. Now I have done some preliminary work ahead of time in that I inked up all of the edges and I saved one piece to show you how I do that. So I take my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo and my Tim Holtz Applicator Tool. You can use makeup sponges, cotton balls, whatever you want to use to do this. And I take the edge and I just swipe down and add ink to the edge or across, however you want to do it to get your ink on the edge of that paper. And what it does, it just gives it a finished look. So I have done that too all of the pieces to these pockets, to this tags. And I have also stamped for journaling on all of these, or on three of these tags. And I left one, see? First I applied gesso with my brayer onto my paper, given a light coat, which makes it just, you can see the difference. It mutes it down and makes it a, a much nicer color than this bold, bold color here. And it's easier to see your journaling with it done like that. So I'm going to take this one that I haven't yet inked, stamped my lines with, and I have my trusty stamp here. One day this stamp came up missing and I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to be totally lost without this stamp. And then I thought, okay, let's take some corrugated cardboard and let's peel off a layer and let's make a stamp. It worked wonderfully. And I used that for a while until I found my stamp again. I just love my stamp. The corrugated cardboard was easier. You could get it all done in one inking. There's just something about this stamp. I guess it's been my buddy for so long that I just have to use it. So anyhow, let's move on and let's just, I pat my ink pad onto my stamp my preference again, and it's just because I feel that's easier on your ink pad than rubbing it. So I just pat it and then push down, give it a firm little push there, and your stamping is all done, just like that. So I have my journaling lines on my papers. I have my, everything's all inked up. Now we need to decide what we're going to do to start the back of these papers here. And I've been adding snowflakes to everything, and I'm going to do that again. On these two, I have a piece of the silk that was behind the lace on that pillow sham, and I'm going to layer that on here like this. Now, the funny story about this is, it's silk, obviously, and I wasn't paying any attention that my iron was turned way up, 
And the first piece I totally destroyed. But before I destroyed it, I realized, oh, look at the texture I'm getting. So I turned my iron down, waited for it to cool down, and then proceeded to be very carefully iron this again. And I got this really cool texture. If you're careful, that's kind of fun to do. So I'm going to set these two pieces aside, knowing that I am going to put those over top of whatever I put on here. I want to do something with some design to it. So whether it's some snowflakes that we've already done, or whether I go ahead and, and do more, I'm not sure. I want to do paper, though, because I'm going to add that silk over top of it. Now, I have this. If I can get my hands on it. There we go. I have this, and I think that's real pretty. We could add some green to our... our we haven't added green yet. This is a ledger piece of paper. But if I did that and then put this over top of that... Well, that would be kind of pretty. We have, we're have we doing belly band. We have a belly band like this. Hmm. I think it wastes this paper. I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to do something directly onto here. So I am going to um, stamp and emboss. We've got to do the stamping and embossing with the silver. I'm going to take this. I have another table over there that I do my stamping and embossing with because if I do it here on this work surface, then I have embossing powder just all over everywhere and I don't like that gritty feel when I'm doing this. I'm gonna go over there. I'm going to ink up my stamp with Versamark. I'm going to put on my silver embossing powder and then he set it and I will be right back. All right, I want to very quickly show you my embossing process in case you don't know how to do this I can show you I have a piece of pink cardstock here I have my stamp that's going to fit on there and this is a PSX PSX it was called originally personal stamp exchange and they called changed it to PSX that was a long time ago and it is E2732 any stamp will do I personally, again, it's a personal preference, like the wood-mounted stamps. I do have a place in my life for unmounted stamps, and that's when I just want to add a bit of this or a bit of that here or there. Script especially, I am big on unmounted. My ink of choice for embossing is Versamark Watermark Stamp Pad. It's by Sukaniko, and it is very sticky. It, mine also is quite old, and it normally is is like a creamy color here. I've been uh, kind of mis mis misusing and abusing it. Anyhow, I'm going to take my stamp to my ink pad, or you can take your ink pad to your stamp. Again, it's totally up to you. I am going to put on a good amount of ink, make sure my surface is clean here, and I'm going to take it straight down onto my paper and press down without wobbling it. If you wobble it, you're bound to get a mirror, uh, like a shadow image on it. So stamp down and then lift it straight off. You have your image now on your paper. You may not be able to see that. Depends on what kind of paper you're using. I have embossing powder in a little container like this because I like to pour it in there, take a spoon, put my piece of paper over top of my container and sprinkle on my embossing powder. And then I'll tap that piece of paper. I can do this actually with a whole book page too and get the excess off. Now I want to let you know that my stamp is old and once they get old and you've used them a lot and this one I have used a lot they tend to wear down a little bit so I don't get a real crisp clean image on any of my old stamps. Is that okay with me? That sure is okay with me. I love this stamp and I'm not going to throw it away just because it's not perfect. I'm not perfect either but I haven't been thrown away yet. So anyhow, there's that. Then I have my heat gun. Now you can use, I've heard, you can use a hair dryer for this. The problem with a hair dryer is you have a wider nozzle on it than, than this. This is just a little one and the air goes out. And so it doesn't really concentrate right on your image and melt it quite as nicely. So I like to take my heat gun and for some reason it's not, there we go, coming on. And I'm going to let it get hot. I'm going to let it get hot because when it's hot, then you're not pouring down heat on your paper and holding it there, waiting for it to melt. And then at that process, you could start 
um, turning your paper brown because you're just aiming this heat right at it, but it's not going to melt until it gets hot enough. So I'm going to get my heat gun. Oh, I think probably I've got an issue with my heat gun. That is not a good thing. Looks like this girl better. There we go. So let that get hot. Do not touch the tip. And then go right down, probably a couple inches away from your paper and move it as it starts to melt. When it's all melted, take the heat away. It's done. And there's how I do my embossing. I have done that to all of these papers, all of these tags. I've taken my stamp and added my snowflakes to my papers here. For the next step, and we're going to continue working on the big, the big pink one first. I have, like I said, my pieces of silk that I want to put over top and look at those snowflakes come through. How perfect is that? So I will take this over to my sewing machine. First, I think I'll run a, a dab of glue. Yes, I am going to take and rub, just, just put a thin line of glue all the way around to hold this in place so that we can put our belly band on so that we can sew that at the same time. I think the art glitter will hold that on securely enough to get to the sewing machine. Here we go. No complaints from the sewing machine department. It went nice and smooth. I do need to trim off the excess around the edges here. So I'll just go right up the side of my paper and just make that look neater. I almost forgot to put my belly bands on. Perfect, right? Our next step is going to be decorating our belly band where our tag's going to go down inside. Remember the... Um, the magenta paper I had that had been stitched, I have a piece of that for here. First off, let's do this in the correct steps. I have this trim that almost looks like it could be snowballs hanging off the edge. What, what, we know it's tassels, but it could be snowballs. Snow, snowballs. Oh my gosh. Let's put a stream of fabric fusion right across the bottom of our belly band and attach our trim to it like that. Now we have our piece of paper, and we're going to glue that down right on top of here. First thing we're going to do, I've got to think this through here, is attach our snowflake. And for the snowflake for this project, I have a crocheted snowflake um, that I had done 100 years ago. Everything was done 100 years ago. And then I have these nice little snowflake brad. So I am going to take the brad through the center of the snowflake, and I lifted right off my trim here. Put that back down. Okay, the brad's through the center of the snowflake, and I'm gonna poke it through this, this paper, just like that. And then make sure, there we go, that the brad is nicely on that center part, and roll it over, and take the prongs of the brad and flatten them out, just like that. That. that way it's not going through our paper here and showing on the back side. There we have it, just like that. Let's do the other one. Again, we'll take our snowflake brad and our snowflake, put the snowflake through the center, making sure that it's not like off to one side or the other, but that it's centered right on and then poking it through here. Now, if you want to make some crocheted snowflakes, there are a hundred, everything is a hundred videos on YouTube that you can pick out one design that you like and make some snowflakes. These are crocheted ones. There we go. We got our brad opened up and it's off center just a bit. So I'm going to move that snowflake just a little. And then I'll glue that down right there. And I'm going to use the art glitter glue to glue this piece of mulberry paper down. So I will add some glue all along the outside edges of this paper. And then I'm going to put some on the inside also. Take our tag here, or our base for our tag, and glue this down. How pretty is that? And then we'll do set this aside and do the same thing to the other one. Put some glue all around the outside edge. I need a new applicator. My little needle tip here doesn't want to stay in my bottle anymore. So I think when I order glue again, I'm going to order myself a new applicator. And then we'll put this one right on this piece. Now for a focal point, the snowflake would be enough. And I could just, I could just have put something over here. But I have a matching circle that's going to match our tag. 
that we're going to put down inside here. One is a bunny, and I thought he would be real cute right there. So let's add him. Again, glue around the outside edge, as close to the edge as I can, and then a little in the center. And Mr. Bunny is going to go just a little bit underneath our snowflake like that. Is this glued down yet? No, it's not. So I'm going to peel that up, get some more of the fabric fusion, and put it right across the top there because I want this trim to be across the circle like that. Actually, I want it to be across the magenta paper too, the mulberry paper. There we go. I like that better. Everything's layered nicely now. And that's our belly band on our large tag. Let's do the other one. So we're going to take a fox this time and add some glue around the outside edge of the circle and put him down just underneath the snowflake. And then we'll add more of the Art Fusion glue across the mulberry paper on the bottom of the belly band is where we're putting it. I know my hand's in the way as I'm trying to hold this snowflake up and across the snowflake, and then we'll put our trim back in place. Then we're gonna set this aside to dry so I'm not monkeying with it and pulling it off, and then it'll set up and dry nicely. There we go. Looks very elegant for our snowflake journal, I think. Let's make a couple tags to go down inside. Now I need to make sure that I have enough space for what I have planned for a tag to go down inside our belly band, which I have. It'll go down inside there just right. We'll pull that out and we're going to fix these, create a, create a focal point on. Now I did do some snowflakes on here and my plan was to add some of this, which would make it so you couldn't see it, but there's room I could actually trim that down a little. So I'm gonna trim this down. I hate to cut off those. Part of doing this was so that I had, you could see some of this. And if I cut it down, you won't be able to see any of it. So I'm either gonna give up the snowflakes or I'm gonna give up the numbers. And I'm not gonna give up the numbers, so I guess the snowflakes won't be seen. That's okay. Let's glue down our business check journal stubs. Some glue all around all the edges and then scribble a little on the inside too. And that goes right down on top of here. Now this is some vintage, it's dated back to 1986 from a business that's out of business. And I was gifted these check stubs and a bunch of other materials, paper supplies from a friend, from my dear sweet sister-in-law. I love to use like this kind of repurposed stuff which is why I like to junk journal, I guess. It's not the only reason I like to junk journal. It's just part of it. So let's get some glue on this one also, this bank stub, check stub, a little on the inside. Center that right on our tag. And the next thing we're going to add are these two cards. They're, they could be journaling cards. I'm going to use them for focal points on here. And they're from the ephemera kit of Irresistible Prints that is what I'm using on this journal. So I want to layer them on there just like that. So I'll take my glitter glue again and glue around the outside edge. I keep going off the edge of this one and a little on the inside. I'm going to have this up toward the top rather than completely centered because if I do it completely centered, you'll see there's more on the top and on the bottom than what there is on the side. So when I have that case, I like to have the same on the top or the same on the bottom as what is on the sides, but not necessarily both. So I like the printing, the writing down here better. So I've chosen to move this up to the top and do the same with this one. There, they make different kinds of tags, don't they? I usually will put a page tab on the top of these or a piece of lace on the top of these. I don't have any lace on these and I have lay, uh, trim here and lace for my pocket. So if I have this down in the belly band like this and then inside my pocket, I think that's probably enough. I don't wanna go overkill with it. 
I want to make sure it was enough. And I think it is. So we're going to leave it. You know what? We have our ledger paper snowflakes. So our adding more snowflakes overkill. Let's go with a small one. I mean, can, can snowflakes be overkill? <laughs> How about we do a, a, one of these ledger paper um, punched out snowflakes that I use the Tim Holtz die with. Anyhow, it embosses and cuts at the same time. I think I want to put that here. So I need two of those, and I'm going to go with blue. And I think I want to go with a smaller one. That competes too much with this bigger one. The smaller one is what I want to use. So I need two blue, smaller or silver. Okay, so, and then probably put something behind that also. Some of this book dictionary paper that we had stenciled some snowflakes on, like that, would be a good idea, just like that. So let's make two pieces of that, and let's ink up around the edge of it. That would be just enough to set that snowflake off from the lace. Otherwise, it gets a little bit lost in that lace, I, I think. Let's add a label to this. There are some labels that came with the kit, and they're just words, so they're small. And keepsakes is what we're going to do. And we'll just put that like underneath our snowflake. Okay, so our glitter glue on our snowflake. I'm gonna go out to all of the edges. You cannot see, I'm sorry. And put that on our dictionary paper. Take our little word label that we have. And put that right underneath one of the snowflake. I want to say branches, but I don't think a snowflake has a branch. There we go. And we'll probably have to use fabric glue on this. And I'm not going to press down too much because I don't want to go through the layers. I just want it to sit on top of the first layer there. There, I like that. Very nice. Let's open this up. And we'll add our second page here top of this one and I don't we didn't do anything more to that did we slide that down in and it goes in the pocket like this and then over on this other side what did we do with it there we go we have our snowflake we're going to add our art glitter glue to all of the edges as it as they go out and put that on our dictionary paper along with our label that says keepsake on it. And put that just, we're gonna go this direction, under like that. And then add some fabric glue and put it on the left-hand side over here. Just pressing it down enough so it makes contact, but not so much that it's gonna go through and cause a problem with our there we go, guys. So we have two two pockets on our sheet music paper with a large tag that you can journal on the back of that has a belly band on it. So you can journal on the back. We need to get a snowflake on there. And then inside the belly band is another tag that you can journal on the back. And again, we need another snowflake. So. We're going to take these out of our pocket for the time being, set this aside, take our tag out of our tag, tag out of our tag, turn these over because blue shows up better than the pink. We are going to take the stencil with our Distress Oxide Salty Ocean and our nice little applicator here that we have. Stencil is a Dreamweaver stencil. And we're just going to add one snowflake to each tag, just like that. Not overkill. Here we go. I just love this applicator. This is so fast and easy. There we go. Tag, slip it back down inside. There, journaling room with a snowflake on the back. Put it back in our pocket. The same here. 
snowflake on the back of both. Slip this down inside our large tag and in our pocket. And there we have it, guys, our finished project. We have a page. Actually, we did, this creates two pages for us to put into our journal signature. This is the signature it's going in. These pages will go behind it, inside it like this, and that will fit in our journal like that. So we'll see this page here, and then we get to the back. Uh, let's see, where is it at? We'll see it back here again too. One with bunnies and one a fox. Okay. That completes our project for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video and we shall see you again the next time we do another page in our Snowflake journal. Thanks for watching. You have a wonderful day and we shall see you again soon. Bye now.